Um, one more question over here. What's your name, sir? And what's your question? Hi, I'm Rory. Uh, I come from Stevenage. Um, first of all, it's nice to meet you, Phil. Um, but I was, I'm, I'm a guitar player myself, and um, one of my favourites was Stevie Ray Vaughan. Uh, mine too. Oh, really? That's great. Um, yeah, but um, I'm led to believe you were at his very last concert before his tragic death. Um, but just what was it like to play with him in general? I never played with him. I suppose, no, we did. We did jam oh, right. together at, at some oh, point. Oh, you jammed, right. Yeah, we jammed together. But uh, he was outrageously good and, uh, and far too good for me. But um, that night, it was at a place called uh, Alpine Valley, which is in Wisconsin somewhere. And uh, they'd arranged, because it's quite near Chicago, so they'd arranged helicopters for us to get back to Chicago after the gig. And uh, we finished the gig, and um, I, I stood at the side of the stage with Eric, like this, watching Stevie Ray Vaughan, and we were both looking at each other going, this guy's fantastic. You know, follow that. And we, we, we did our gig after he was supporting us. And um, after the gig, we, uh, the tour manager said, there's four helicopters in that field over there. Uh, just get on the first one you see and you get a lift back to Chicago. So I, I got on one, I threw my bag in it. And um, then, uh, my, then Steve Ferroni shouted at me from across the, the parking lot place. He said, don't go in that one, come in this one with me. So I, I jumped in with him and um, my bag stayed in that helicopter. And that's the one Stevie Ray Vaughan got on. And it, they just never got back to Chicago. They hit a ski slope at 200 miles an hour. That, for you, probably even now, is like a chilling thought that not only is it an incredible tragedy, but the thought that that, the one shot of Steve, yeah. would have been you. Yeah, he saved my life that night, no doubt. And it was a, a terrible moment, obviously. Uh, I remember getting a phone call at four o'clock in the morning from um, Eric's manager, and I thought, what's this going on? You know, he said, call home and tell your family that you're all right. I said, what's going on? I, I figured he'd, he'd got my bag for me. You know, it was my thought process. He said, just call home and tell your family that you're safe. And then it all came out after yeah. that. Um, <clears throat> I want to go back to the moment that your dad throws you out, you haven't got a job, and your uncles go, you better come to America with us. This is before any sessions, any tours. Yeah. You've just started playing the guitar. And you must have witnessed some crazy shit. It was. It was nuts. It was rock and roll turned up to 11 if you like, but um, we stayed in New York for three weeks, I think, at a place called the Warwick Hotel, and it was pretty mad there. But then we went to uh, Los Angeles and stayed at the, uh, the Hyatt House, which probably is still there, I'm not sure if it is, but it became known as the Riot House because of all the bands used to stay there. And at the time we arrived, there was Led Zeppelin, um, I think, the James Gang were there, and uh, the Elect Electric Light or Orchestra, if I remember rightly. So there's three major bands all staying in this hotel, so you can imagine it was pretty crazy. Um, there's a lot of drugs around of all, all sorts, and um, John Bonham was still the drummer with uh, Led Zeppelin. And I remember being woken up in the middle of the night by um, him taking a Harley Davidson up to the 11th floor in the elevator and driving it up and down the corridor, <laughs> and ripping up the carpets. It was pretty nuts. The old days, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Televisions out the window and a blazing double mattress came past my balcony <laughs> one night. Do you think there was a little bit in that that kind of sparked this side, something in the back of your head that, you know, being a musician was just like, this is a crazy, but 
fun way to spend my life. Yeah, always in the back of my mind, uh, Dad's, you know, this pop lock business going on. I was always very wary of, of too, many, too much drugs, too much this and that. So I think uh, that probably saved me, actually. Right. But that's quite an introduction to the <laughs> world of rock and roll, right? Yeah, really. Um, how are we doing for time? Let me have know. a quick look. Are, are you all good for time? Got anywhere to go? Yeah, quite fine. Oh, that's good. Plenty of time, aren't we? Um, Italy. Yeah. Italy has played an enormously important part in your life and, and continues to do now. You live in Rome. Yeah. Um, you've worked with some of the biggest Italian artists of all time, some of the biggest studios, producers. Yeah. Um, do you speak Italian? Not really. Not very well, anyway. I'm sorry, Rim. <laughs> no, you have to... Well, I, you know, I can get by. I can sort of, if I'm alone in Rome, I can, you know, get fed and find my way around. But it's not very good, my Italian. Did, did that kind of kick off because of the One Spin, Two Spin album? Or was there already like an Italian no, connection the, before? There that? was al always an Italian connection. And one of the, the first international sessions I did was for an Italian artist called Lucio Battisti, which you'll probably know. Corino Nastro Rosa. Thank you, thank you, man. It was, um, but do you have to go to <laughs> You already know the story. <laughs> but um, uh, I, I got a call on a Monday morning from a guy called Jeff Westley, who is a quite well-known record producer and a wonderful orchestral arranger, saying, can you pop into my studio? I've got this track that I need a solo on it. And um, I said, OK, um, I can probably get there by a 10, but I've got to leave at 12.30 because I have a dental appointment. So I arrived there and uh, found an AC30 and plugged the guitar into that. And uh, he said, OK, I'm not going to play you the track. I'll just tell you what key it's in. He said, it's in C-sharp minor. I just want you to play. Do your thing. Be Phil Palmer, he said. And um, I, d I gave him two takes and uh, went to the dentist. And um, never thought about it again. And it was 10 years later when I w uh, found myself in Milan uh, at a meeting with a guy at the record company. And um, on the way from the airport, Conan and Nastra Rosa, this, this famous song, came on the radio. And they'd kept all of the coda. It's like a two-minute guitar solo, which was completely improvised at the time. And, uh, you know, two takes. I did two takes and he edited it, edited it together. And that was, uh, it became one of the most successful summer hits in Italian history. Mm. And it's a, it's a lovely little tune. I've got a piano version. I wonder if I could play it. I Steve? Steve? Where is he? How many Italians do we have here tonight? How's it for your Italian? Two. I know there's one. A couple down here. I say I know over there. Hello. Um, how many people have travelled from abroad to be here tonight? All the way from the USA? Uh, from Tor uh, Toronto? From Canada? Sorry, yes. Wow. Italy. 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 Okay. Anyone travelled from South London? I know it's across the river, but we're here now, aren't we? <laughs> Whilst we're just working this out, we'll just do a little commercial break. This is the Camden Club. We opened last May. My name's Tony. I curate all the music here. Andy is the owner, Andrew Hart over there. And uh, Andy had a vision to create a beautiful space for music here in Camden in North London, and this is it. Anyway, back to the show. Sorry. <laughs> this is something that Jeff Wesley put together. It's not the actual track. A version of it in piano and guitar.
Close. <laughs> wow, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Phil Prime. Well, that was beautiful. Thank that you. was quite transcendental, actually. It was just standing at the side. Really. On another massive round of applause. <laughs> Listen, how about we do a little bit more music? And, I, and I'd like you to tell the story about Eric's giving you a cassette to learn, this, to learn the set, right? And you've listened to the cassette and, yeah, I've worked it all out, I'm good. And then you turn yeah. up. Yeah, there's a cassette, the old days, of a C90, I think it was called. So uh, uh, there was like 12 tracks on one side of the cassette and I thought, well, that's probably it. But in fact, it wasn't. And um, there was two tracks on the B side of the cassette, which I, I hadn't listened to. And so we found ourselves in Holland rehearsing for the first show and Eric calls a tune called Running on Faith. And I went, Running on Faith? <laughs> I don't know that one. And he said, yeah, and I want you to play the solo and uh, it should be on a, on a Dobro, really. I said, I haven't got a Dobro. And he said, well, make do with what we got. So I, I had a, a goad in Acoustacaster thing and I, I sat in a corner and said, I've just got to change the strings. And I, I, I put a cassette player on and I started to listen to the song and learn the solo and uh, got away with it. But I think we could probably have a go at it, shall we? Yeah, yeah why not? Why not? <laughs> Sounds like a good idea to me. <laughs> okay. Let's have a slide. Um, I don't know, G, maybe G. Let's try G.
And all of our dreams will come true Uh, Steve, uh, you just thought he was good at computers. No, what a great voice, great, great uh, guitar skills. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, thanks a lot, Steve. So, you've got Phil Palmer on stage. We, we, if I ask him any more questions, you won't need to buy the book, right? So, obviously, we need to leave some for you to um, uh, discover. But any other final questions before Phil comes and joins you? He will be over at the back uh, signing books and talking... Two questions here. This gentleman with the, the hat and the glasses we haven't spoken to yet. Microphone's coming your way, sir. Hello, Phil. I'm Colin. You know me. Hello, Colin. Um, right. When you did the, um, the Nebworth and you stood it, you know, when Eric broke his string, yeah. had you spoken about it before or did you just off the no, top no, of your head? He broke a string. I mean, we weren't expecting it. Um, I just had to launch into a solo spontaneously. But so you never... So Honestly. it won't get between you and him. No, no. Uh, spontaneous is great. I love spontaneous. I mean, uh, we just kind of proved that it's really kind of fun. Whether it's accurate or not is another thing. <laughs> but, um, it's good. You know, I, I, that's how I like to play these days. I don't like to be too prepared. I think Eric was quite pleased, actually, wasn't he? I hope so. I think <laughs> he didn't beat me up or anything afterwards. So. <laughs> We got on all, always really well, me and Eric. I, I liked Eric a lot. Cheers, mate. Okay, Thank and a question you. over here one more time. Hi, um, it's Mike again. <laughs> um, I'm a massive Joan Armour trading fan. I've been for donkey's years, and when I found out you played on uh, uh, her albums, I was really excited. So, um, a bit of a geeky question, but what's your favourite Joan track and why? Uh, I think it's got to be love and affection. It's just a, a wonderful song, rather than anything. And great and chords too. So have you played played that particular? Yeah, I played it live many times with her. Yeah, but I just love the chords. I'll just give you a quick example on acoustic because they're Thank great you. chords. I thought I hoped you might. <laughs> Not talking about the trousers, but the chords. No, okay. <clears throat> We'll take one final question from Mitch here at the front. 
Oh, hello. hello. I'm Mitch. I'm uh, Mitch. It's pretty amazing that the story you tell about your dad and the, the amount of musicians I know who have had problems with their dad. I had a very similar problem. My dad was a jazz pianist oh, wow. and read music. And when I took up, I became a bass player and couldn't read music. So I spent nearly 20 years playing live, playing good venues, playing with good artists. And my dad never came and saw me once and refused. And sadly, when I was 27, he passed away. Oh, but to hear the story that your dad came is fantastic. But you hear all these stories and you've, so many artists have said this story that back in our day when we were young, you know, dads didn't accept the pop business. No, he didn't want to. It that. just shows that musicians can accomplish just what they want. Just to embellish that story slightly more, because um, Eric's, band, Eric's band we used to do a hug thing on stage where everyone used to join in a circle and just say thank you for the music and blah, blah, blah. And he, he noticed that, my dad noticed that. When he came back stage afterwards, he said, uh, what's all this hugging thing that you do? I said, it's just, a, you know, we're, we're chums and it's uh, to celebrate the music. He said, I wanted to hug you too then, son. Oh. And it was, you know, it's full on emotion now. You know, just, uh, just going on, like Mike, Mike, Mike Rutherford, the living years was wrote about the anguish that he had with his father oh, really? over music. So it just shows that there is that yeah. barrier between son and father. Massive, yeah. Yeah, so it's great to hear your story that he... It had a great ending, so it thank you. Ending, Thanks actually. for tonight, fantastic. Well, thank I, I want to say, uh, is, is there anything you would like to say before we hand you over to the, the, the mob? Just thanks to everybody for coming out and, uh, you know, clapping and enjoying. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. And um, it's good to meet you all. And I'm going to come and say hello in a minute and uh, sign a few books if you want books. And it's been a good evening. Thank you very much. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen... Commander Phil Palmer, leading from the front. Fantastic stories, incredible musicianship. We are thrilled and blessed that the Camden Club was your venue. And I'm just absolutely delighted I got the chance to, to meet you and chat with you. Thank you very much, Tony. Did a good job. All right, we're going to put some background music on. And Phil will be over there. Get some drinks, have a chat, buy a book, get it signed, do some pictures, ask some questions. We'll see you in a while. Thank you.